In this video, we're going to continue working with our exponential and logarithmic functions and actually use them to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. Now, as you can guess probably by the name, an exponential equation is an equation that uses exponential functions. And a logarithmic equation is an equation that uses logarithmic functions. And remember, we already learned that exponentials and logarithms are inverses of each other. And that means we're going to be using one of them to solve equations of the other type and vice versa. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to learn today is the equivalence property of exponential expressions. So the equivalence property of exponential expressions. And it says that if B, X, and Y are real numbers, and B is greater than zero and not equal to one, then B to the X power equals B to the Y power implies that x is equal to y. So what this is saying here is if we can rearrange an equation so it's of the form base to a power equals base to some other power, then we know the two powers have to be equal to each other. So let's do an example where we solve an exponential equation using this property. So we have 4 to the 2x minus 3 power is equal to 64. So we can't use that property right away because right now it's not written in the form something to a power equals that same something to a power. So my goal is to rewrite both sides of, these equ of this equation so that it's a base, the same base, to powers. So the first thing I'm going to try to think of is, can I write 64 as a power of 4? And I can. 64 is the same thing as 4 to the third power. So when I rewrite that 64 as 4 to the third, it's now in the correct form to use that equivalence property that we just learned. I have 4 to this power equals 4 to that power. So that means that the two powers have to be equal to each other. And now I can solve this just using our standard algebra. Add three to both sides and divide by two. And I get X is equal to three. And if we wanted to, we could plug it back in and check and it's going to work. Let's do another example like this. It's nice when you're able to rewrite the problem so both sides have the same base, because then we can use this property and the problems are relatively straightforward to solve. So let's do another one like that, but a little more complicated. 27 to the 2w plus 5 equals 1 third to the 2 minus 5w. So I definitely have exponents on both sides, but I cannot just set the exponents equal to each other. Because right now I don't have the same base on both sides. I want to rewrite this so everything has the same base. And the first thing I notice is I know 27 is equal to three to the third power. So I'm gonna write 27 as three to the third. And then I have to think, can I write one third as three to some power? And I can, because remember, if you have a negative exponent, that flips things upside down. So this one third is really the same thing as three to the negative one power. And I still have my two minus five W up there. All right, so now we have to remember some of our properties of exponents. When I have one exponent and then it's raised to another, we get to multiply the exponents. Be careful, we're gonna to have to distribute all the way through. 
So on the left side, I have three to the six W plus 15 power. And on the right side, I have three to the negative two plus five W power. Make sure you distribute all the way through. And now I'm finally set to use my property because I have three to this power equals three to that power. So six W plus 15 has to equal negative two plus five W. I'll go ahead and move this five W over to the left side, which gets me W plus 15 equals negative two. And then all I have to do to get W by itself is subtract 15. So I will get W equals negative 17. So that's a way you can solve exponential equations when you can write it as the same base on both sides to different powers. You get to set the powers equal to each other. But of course, you're not going to be able to do that in every single problem. So what do we do if we can't rewrite both sides to be in terms of the same base? Well, that's where logarithms come back in. Let me write down some steps for how we solve an exponential equation using logarithms. Steps for solving exponential equations using logarithms. Step one, isolate the exponential expression. on one side of the equation. Step two, take logarithms of both sides. Now you can take any logarithm that you want. It can be of any base. Usually I use the natural log just because I happen to like that one the best. Sometimes I'll use the common log instead, the one that's base 10, but usually only if I have a 10 to a power in the problem. Otherwise, I just use natural logs all the time. It does not matter what kind of logarithm you use, your answer will be equivalent. Step three, use properties of logarithms. In particular, use the power property of logarithms. That's the one that says that we can take the power and bring it in front of the logarithm. And then solve what you have at the end. So let's do a couple of examples where we introduce logarithms to the problem in order to solve it. So we're going to start by solving 5 to the x power equals 83. Now I want to point out we couldn't do this one using that property that we've been using because I cannot write 83 as 5 to some power. If I could, I would just use that property and be done with it, but we cannot do that. We're going to have to use logarithms. So first step is to make sure that your exponential expression is isolated. Mine already is. Next step is to take a log of both sides. I'm going to use the natural log, but you can use whatever kind of log you like. Make sure you do it to both sides of the equation. And now I get to use that power property of my logarithm. So it says that power can come down in the front. So I get x times the natural log of 5 equals the natural log of 83. And all I have to do to get x by itself is just divide both sides by the natural log of 5. So I get x is equal to 
the natural log of 83 over the natural log of 5. And is that an ugly answer? Yeah, it is an ugly answer. But unfortunately, we're going to get a lot of ugly answers for these couple of sections. And it's okay. If you want to know what that is as a decimal, you would go ahead and type it into your calculator to get an approximation. Now, if you had used a different base log, your answer might look slightly different. But if you typed it into your calculator, it would be equivalent to this one. Let's do another example like this. Let's solve 400 plus 10 to the 4x minus 1 power equals 63,000. So the first thing we have to do is make sure our exponential expression is isolated. And right now ours is not because I have this 400 added in front of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 400 from both sides. When I do that, I get 10 to the 4x minus 1 equals 62,600. And now I'm ready to use the logarithms to finish solving this. This time I'm going to use the common logarithm. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I have a base of 10. So it might make my answer look a little bit better. You could still use the natural log if you wanted to. Your answer would just look different. But if you type it into the calculator, it would be the same answer. Let me use common log just to show you how that one's done. Take the common log of both sides. And now I can use the property that a log and an exponential with the same base are inverses of each other. So log of 10 to the 4x minus 1 is just 4x minus 1. That's the whole reason why I use the base 10 log this time, because then it will simplify very nicely. I still have log of 62,600 over on the right side. So to get x by itself, we're going to add 1. And then divide by 4. So I get x equals the log of 62,600 plus 1, all divided by 4. And again, yes, this is a really ugly answer. If you wanted a decimal approximation, you would just type it into your calculator at that point. Let's try another one. Let's solve 100 equals 700 e to the negative 0 0.2 times k. Now on this problem, I'm going to end up using my natural logs again. There's a couple reasons for that. One, because I have a base of e, so it's always nice to use the same base. But also because I just happen to like natural logs. I tend to use natural logs on all of the problems unless I have a base 10 exponential expression, like the last problem. So right now I have to do something before I take a logarithm. My exponential is not completely by itself. I still have a 700 multiplied in front. We have to start by dividing by 700. If I divide by 700 on both sides, I get 1 7th. And now my exponential is by itself, so I'm going to take a logarithm. And I'm going to use the natural log. And just like the last problem, this log and this exponential have the same base, so they undo each other. So I have natural log of 1 7th on the left. And on the right, I just have negative 0.2k. So to get k by itself, I just have to divide by negative 0.2. And I get natural log of 1 7 over negative 0.2. Now, it is possible.
simple. If you're doing problems like this and checking your answer in the back of the book, your answer might look completely different than what the book says. And that's because you can rewrite this many different ways using properties of logarithms. So don't be too concerned if your answers look a little bit different because there are tons of different ways to write the same exact answer. If you're checking your answer in the back of a book somewhere, type your answer into a calculator, type the book's answer into the same calculator, and you'll see that they're the same if you have an equivalent answer. If you get something different for both of them, then yes, check your work because something went wrong. But it is possible you have the right answer even if it looks very, very different. Let's do another example that's going to be a little bit trickier because we're going to have exponential expressions on both sides. So solve 3 to the 5x minus 6 equals 2 to the 4x plus 1. Well, unfortunately, when you have exponential expressions on both sides, you don't really have much of a choice. You just have to go ahead and take a logarithm, and it's going to be really ugly. So I'm going to use the natural log again, just because that's my favorite. Natural log of 3 to the 5x minus 6 is equal to natural log of 2 to the 4x plus 1. And now I can use that power property of logarithms to bring the power down in the front. That gives me 5x minus 6 times the natural log of 3 equals 4x plus 1 times the natural log of 2. So what do we do from here? Well, we're going to distribute, and then we're going to get everything with an x on one side and everything else on the other side. Start by distributing. Don't worry too much about the multiplication. It's just going to look gross. We have 5x times the natural log of 3 minus 6 natural log of 3. And on the right side, I'm going to have 4x natural log of 2 plus natural log of 2. So I have two terms that involve an x. I have this 5x natural log of 3, and over here I have this 4x natural log of 2. I'm going to bring everything with an x over to the left side and everything else over on the right. So if I move all my x terms to the left, I'll have 5x natural log of 3 minus 4x natural log of 2. And I'm going to move everything without an x over to the right side. So that gives me natural log of 2 plus my 6 natural log of 3. Now remember, our goal is to figure out what x is. So I need to get that x by itself. What I can do over on this side is factor out that x. If I factor out x, I have 5 natural log of 3 minus 4 natural log of 2. And this equals natural log of 2 plus 6 natural log of 3. And if I divide both sides by everything in these parentheses, I'll have my answer. So I get x is equal to natural log of 2 plus 6 natural log of 3 divided by 5 natural log of 3 minus 4 natural log of 2. And again, there are other ways to write this answer. You could use a bunch of log properties to rewrite this. I personally don't bother doing that unless I'm told I have to, because this is equivalent to the right answer, and that's a lot more work than we need to do trying to rewrite it in different ways. All right, now let's do a really tricky one. E to the 2x minus 5e e to the x minus 14 equals 0. Now, the reason I say this one's tricky is because there's no way 
to isolate your exponential expression on one side right now. However, there is something special we can do. It's called substitution. And you're gonna use that a lot once you're in calculus. So it's good to get used to it now. Now, substitution is really just kind of hiding things that make things tricky, hiding it in a new variable to make things easier. So the first thing I notice when I look at this is it kind of looks like a quadratic equation. If this were an x squared and this were a minus 5x, it would look quadratic. So maybe let's see what happens if I try to rewrite it so it's quadratic. I'm going to come up with a new variable, u, and I'm going to let u equal e to the x. And then notice that u to the second power would be e to the x squared, which is e to the 2x. Well, that's good news because that means I can rewrite this guy as u squared and this guy as a minus 5u. So using this little bit of a trick here, I can rewrite my problem as u squared minus 5u minus 14 equals zero. And I have a quadratic equation. And we know all about solving quadratic equations. Let's go ahead and try to factor this one. So I need two things that multiply to negative 14 and add up to negative five. That would be negative seven and positive two. And now I know I can set each piece equal to zero using my zero product property. So I get u equals seven or u equals negative two. But we're not done. My original problem had x's. We need to figure out what x is, not what u is. So at this point, now that we know what u is equal to, plug your substitution back in. We said u was e to the x. So now I have e to the x equals 7, or e to the x equals negative 2. Now, this e to the x equals negative 2 is not going to give us a solution. Why is that? Well, remember the graph of e to the x is always positive. It's never going to equal negative 2. If you tried to keep solving it, you'd end up taking a natural log of negative 2, and your calculator will tell you that's wrong. It can't have negatives inside a natural log. So if you have e to the x equals a negative number, you get to throw it out. That's never going to happen. So e to the x equals 7 is my only possible way to an answer. To finish solving this, take a natural log of both sides. Natural log of e to the x is x. So I get x is equal to the natural log of 7. And that is the solution to the original problem. So when you get something that looks like it might be quadratic, you might want to try that weird substitution trick. I personally think it's kind of fun because it sort of feels like cheating. You're hiding the difficult part inside of a new variable, but it's not cheating because you end up putting it back later and fixing it later. So you get your original variable as an answer. All right, so, so far we've done a lot of various exponential equations. Now we need to learn how to solve logarithmic equations. And we're going to start with an equivalence property. Of logarithmic expression. This property says that if B, X, and Y are real numbers, which are positive, and B is not equal to 1, then log base B of X equals log base B of Y implies that x is equal to y. 
So this is saying if you ever have a situation where you have a logarithm, the same base on both sides of an equation, you can set their insides equal to each other. So if you have log base B of something equals log base B of something else, you can set their insides equal to finish solving the equation. Let's do an example using this property. So if we have log base two of seven X minus four, equals log base two of two X plus one. Notice that both sides of this equation have a log of the same base. That means I can set the insides equal to each other using our new property. So I get seven X minus four equals two X plus one. And this I can solve using just my standard algebra. I'm gonna subtract two X from both sides. And then I'm going to add four to both sides. And now all I have to do is just divide by a five and get X equals one. Now, the only thing that's a little tricky with problems that have logarithms from the very beginning is you always need to check your work. Now, I'm not one who usually checks my work. I tend to be pretty lazy about that. So when I tell you, you need to check your work, I mean you really need to. It's something you have to do because sometimes you're gonna get answers that don't actually work. So you should always check your work once you have logarithms at the very beginning. So let me check my answer. To check my answer, I just have to plug my answer into the original equation. So I have log base two of seven times one minus four. We want to know if this is equal to log base two of two times one plus one. So let me simplify inside my parentheses. Seven times one is seven minus four is three. And over here, I have two times one is two plus one is three. Is log base two of three equal to log base two of three? Yes, it is. So this is my answer. So the main reason why we have to check whenever we have logarithms is sometimes you'll get an answer that when you plug it back in, you end up with a negative inside your logarithm. And we cannot take logarithms of negative numbers. So you have to check to make sure everything's still well-defined and then you'll be good to go. Let's do another example similar to this one. Natural log of x plus natural log of x minus eight equals natural log of x minus 20. So right now, I can't use my property right away. I don't just have logarithm equals logarithm. This side has two logarithms in it. But I do have properties of logarithms, and I know how to rewrite the sum of logarithms as one single log. Using that one property that we have, I know that this left side becomes natural log of x times x minus 8. And I'm doing nothing to the right side, just leaving it alone. So now my equation looks like natural log of this equals natural log of that. So we can set the insides equal to each other. X times X minus eight equals X minus 20. Distribute on this left side, X squared minus eight X equals X minus 20. And look at this, we have a quadratic equation. So move everything over to one side. I will have x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals 0. And I'm going to solve this one by factoring. So 
So if I factor, what multiplies to positive 20 but adds up to negative 9? Well, that would be a negative 4 and a negative 5. And then I can set each piece equal to 0 using my zero product property. So I get x is 4 or x is 5. Are we finished? No. My original problem had logarithms in it, so I have to check my answers. If you don't check your answers, you could very well get the answer incorrect. So it's time to check. Let's check x equals 4 first. I'm going to plug that into the original. Natural log of 4 plus the natural log of 4 minus 8 equals the natural log of 4 minus 20. And I already see that this is going to give us some problems, but let me simplify it a little bit for you. Inside these two natural logs, I now get natural log of a negative 4, and I have a natural log of a negative 16. We cannot take natural logs of negative numbers. They're not in the domain. So this one does not work because this natural log of negative 4 and natural log of negative 16 are not defined. So I know x equals 4, not a solution. So now we have to check x equals 5. For x equals 5, I would have natural log of 5 plus natural log of 5 minus 8 equals natural log of 5 minus 20. But if I simplify this, I have a natural log of a negative 3, and I have a natural log of a negative 15. This is another no, because once again, I have logarithms that have arguments that are negative, and we do not have negative numbers in the domain of a logarithm. We cannot do that. So what does this mean? We had two answers, but neither one worked. Well, that means that the answer to the overall problem is that there is no solution. We had found that if there were an answer, it would have to be either four or five, but neither of those worked. So there's no answer to the original problem. This is why it's important to always check your work when you have logarithms in the very beginning of the problem. All right, so that was how we solve logarithmic equations when it has a log on both sides. But what if we can't use that property? Well, then we have to use exponential form. So solving logarithmic equations using exponential form. steps for this. Isolate your logarithms on one side. Then use your log properties to simplify so that it looks like the form log base b of something equals a number. Then write in exponential form solve and then don't forget to check your answers at the end. See, looks kind of funny. There we go. So what we're going to do is get all the logs on one side. We're going to use our log properties to rewrite the equation so it looks like log of something equals a number. Then we rewrite the logarithm in its exponential form 
solve the resulting equation, check the answers at the end. So we have a few examples of how to do this to finish this video up. All right. So an example. Eight times log base four of W plus six is equal to 24. And I want to figure out what W is. Well, first thing, we have to get the logarithm completely by itself. So I want to divide both sides by eight. When I divide both sides of my equation by eight, I get log base four of W plus six equals three. So I'm in the form log of something equals a number. Now I can rewrite in the exponential form. My base is four. I get four to the third power equals W plus six. Four to the third is 64. And then I just have to subtract six from both sides to get 58. And we're not finished because we need to check our work. So let's go ahead and check our answer. So our check, we can plug that back into the original equation. Eight times log base four of 58 plus six. And we want to know, is this equal to 24? Well, inside this logarithm, 58 plus six is 64. Log base four of 64, that's asking four to what power equals 64? Well, four to the third is 64. So I get eight times three equals 24 and that works. So W does indeed equal 58. All right, let's do two more examples. How about log of t minus 18 equals 1.4. So this one's already in the proper form. I have logarithm of something equals a number. So I can rewrite it in exponential form. The base of your common log is 10. So I get 10 to the 1.4 power equals t minus 18. So now if I solve this for t, I get 10 to the 1.4 plus 18 equals t. But we need to check this answer still. To check it, plug that back in. Log of 10 to the 1.4 plus 18 minus 18, is this equal to 1.4? Well, the 18 and minus 18 inside that logarithm will subtract away to zero. So I have log of 10 to the 1.4 equals 1.4, which is true. Remember that when you have a log and an exponential of the same base, they undo each other. So I would have a result of 1.4 on this left side, and that equals my 1.4 on the right side. So this, 10 to the 1.4 plus 18 was the solution to that equation. All right, one last equation for us to solve for this video. Let's solve two minus log base seven of X equals log base seven of x minus 48. So the first thing I have to do is get all of my logarithms on the same side. So I'm going to add this log over to the right side. That will give me 2 equals 
log base 7 of x minus 48 plus log base 7 of x. And now I want to use logarithm properties so that I have just one logarithm on one side of the equation. Using my property that involves products, I can rewrite this right side as log base 7 of x minus 48 times x. And now I can write this in exponential form. My base is 7, the other side of the equation is 2, so I get 7 squared equals x minus 48 times x. Distribute. So I have 49 equals x squared minus 48x. This is a quadratic equation. Move your 49 to the other side. And now I'm going to factor this. What multiplies to negative 49 but adds up to negative 48? Well, that would be x minus 49 x plus 1. So I get to set each piece equal to 0 using my zero product property. And I get x is 49 or x is negative 1. But we're not finished. We still have to check our answer to make sure we don't end up with undefined logarithm. So let's check x equals 49 first. We plug that back into the original equation. 2 minus log base 7 of my x, so we'll do 49, equals log base 7 of my x minus 48. So I have on this left side 2 minus log base 7 of 49. Well, this is 7 to what power equals 49? Well, 7 squared equals 49, so log base 7 of 49 is 2. And over on this side, I have a log base 7 of 1. Well, we know any logarithm of 1 is equal to 0, so I get 0 equals 0, and that answer worked. x equals 49 is an acceptable solution to this problem. But what about x equals negative 1? Is that going to be acceptable? Let's check that one. So to check x equals negative 1, plug it back into the original equation. 2 minus log base 7 of negative 1 equals log base 7 of negative 1 minus 48. And you can already see we have issues. I have a negative inside of this logarithm as well as that one. We can't take logarithms with negatives. So this is an issue, and so is that. x equals negative 1 is not a solution because it gives us undefined logarithms. x equals 49 was okay. That one worked out. So you see, sometimes when you solve a logarithmic equation, every single answer you find works just fine. Other times, none of the answers work. And even other times, some do and some don't. That's why you always have to check your work at the very end when you have a logarithm at the beginning. The reason we have those issues is because of that domain of the logarithms. We cannot have negative numbers or zero as an input to a logarithm. So that's all I have for you today on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. In our next video, we're going to solve more of these types of equations, but they're going to be application problems. So we're going to have a lot of word problems in the next video using all the skills we just learned. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. If you're a current student, you can also ask in office hours or through email. And I'll see you guys next time.